General Creighton Abrams was an American military general known for his leadership during the Vietnam War. During one particular battle in Vietnam, one of his tanks became disabled and the crew was trapped inside. Despite the danger, General Abrams ordered his helicopter to land, climbed onto the tank and rescued the crew personally. This story exemplifies his bravery and dedication to his troops, earning him great respect among those who served under him in Vietnam. As a mark of respect to General Abrams, the United States first commissioned the M1 Abrams tanks into the US Army in 1980. It was first deployed during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 in the war between Kuwait and Iraq. The M1 Abrams tank was highly successful during its first major deployment. It was able to effectively engage and destroy enemy armor, providing a significant advantage to the coalition forces. The tank's superior firepower, protection and mobility made it well suited for the desert environment in Kuwait and it proved to be a key component of the American victory in the conflict. In over a month and a half, it led to the surrender of Saddam Hussein's troops and the liberation of Kuwait. Today, 30 years on, the Abrams M1 and M2 tanks are some of the most successful in the US Army inventory. Last week, US President Joe Biden agreed to send more than 30 M1 Abrams tanks into Ukraine, a decision that he had been reluctant to make for many months now. His hand was forced, in a sense, by Germany, which decided to send over a dozen Leopard 2 tanks, and by Britain, which announced earlier that it will be sending the Challenger 2 tanks. Now, the process of delivering Western weapons and other military equipment to Ukraine has been one of the most heavily guarded secrets of this war. There have been widespread concerns that Russia will target roads or railways which transport these heavy-duty weapons. As a result, stealth convoys, usually cloaked in darkness or disguised, are used to evade any possible attack. Now, with the US, Germany and Britain announcing that they will be sending these advanced battle tanks to Ukraine, the biggest challenge would be how to transport them. On Crux Decode, what is the process of transporting these heavy-duty tanks? Will they get there in time to make a difference to the Ukraine war? Will Vladimir Putin be able to negate the effects of these heavy-duty weapons? And will the special military operation itself conclude before these tanks reach the battlefield. Russia is not known to have successfully struck a large convoy of Western weapons being shipped into Ukraine. Now, experts describe the process of transporting these heavy weapons into the conflict zone as a game of cat and mouse, which so far at least, Ukraine has been winning. The risks and worries over provoking Russia are so great that Ukrainian troops must retrieve these weapons from depots in NATO territory instead of having Western forces or contractors deliver them directly to the conflict zone. So many of these drop-offs are happening in countries like Poland, Slovakia and Romania, which border Ukraine. An attack by Russia on a convoy of weapons would not only delay these deliveries, which in itself is likely to take anywhere between three to six months, but also take out a sizable part of these weapons shipments even before they reach the front lines. A Pentagon spokesman declined to discuss the efforts on how to deliver the 50 billion US dollars of weapons and security assistance that the Biden administration has already committed to Ukraine. But former Western military officials describe a patchwork of delivery routes, largely originating from hubs in Poland, Slovakia and Germany, which will be crucial to getting these tanks and armored fighting vehicles into the front lines. Most of these weapons will be shipped either by rail cars or through flatbed trucks that are strong enough to carry the weight of these tanks. Rail is generally the fastest and the safest way to move armor, given that long convoys of trucks would likely attract Russia's attention. It would take too much time, too much fuel and spare parts to drive these tanks into the battlefield. They would also become sitting ducks for Russian warplanes. There are a series of delays that are expected between the announcement, which happened last week, and the tanks actually being deployed on the battlefield. The donor countries will have to build up a huge supply-side stockage to deliver these vehicles. They will have to train crews and mechanics, 
and then move to the actual deployment. It's going to take anywhere between three to six months at the very least. The decision to send these tanks came after months of reluctance on both the American and the German side. Both countries had been toying with the idea of sending tanks to Ukraine, but were putting it off for different reasons. The United States was not sure how much tanks would actually help Ukraine in the battlefield, and Germany did not want to annoy Putin. Ultimately, it was a nudge from the British who first announced that these tanks consignments, which then forced the hand of both Washington and Berlin. The US decision was also a divergence from previous positions taken by the Biden administration, which maintained that the M1 Abrams would be difficult to deliver, they'd be far too expensive to maintain, and they would be challenging for Ukrainian troops to operate. The reactions from Russia have been critical yet calm. Neither the political nor the military leadership has shown any kind of alarm. They seem confident that these heavy weapons do not pose any major strategic threat to Russia on the battlefield. Even Western analysts largely agree that these tanks will not be able to turn around the battlefield situation. It is already in Russia's favor. Moscow will try and solidify its positions in Bakhmut, Solidar and Zaporizhia by the time these tanks reach Ukraine. Russia has also introduced its T-90M Pro-V tanks that have been praised by its Ukrainian opponents. It has also deployed other supporting assets like large artillery and aircraft inventory to complement its armored operations. Moscow also recently appointed its Chief of General Staff, General Valery Gerasimov, as the Ukraine War Commander. It transferred him from his previous position in anticipation of this tank war. Gerasimov is a career Armored Corps officer and one of the senior most tank men in the Russian army. Experts on Telegram groups indicate that President Vladimir Putin would try to wrap up the war by capturing these three regions in the east and in the south before the tanks hit the battlefield. German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius has said that the first tanks from Germany should be in Ukraine in three months' time and that the training of Ukrainian crew should begin soon. As German media has previously reported, citing figures from the Ministry of Defense in Berlin, as of May last year, the Bundeswehr had more than 300 Leopard 2 tanks, including 200 which were in service, 99 which were under repair or being upgraded. The US Department of Defense has mentioned that the Abrams tanks that are going to be provided to Ukraine will be part of the Security Assistance Initiative, which means that these weapons will come from not the American military's inventory, but from the manufacturer directly. Now, that would mean it's going to take at least four to six months before these Abrams tanks reach Ukraine. Russia is also likely to aim to take the remaining bits of territory in the breakaway parts of Donbass and keep this war from escalating further. The Biden administration is sending not the readily available tanks from its inventory, but sending it directly from the manufacturer, which has a twin objective. It does not want to deplete its own military stock. It also indicates a reluctance in provoking Moscow with any kind of big instigation. They just want to do this in small incremental doses that eventually meets the war objectives on the ground. The US wants to keep this war from engulfing the rest of Europe while strategically confronting Moscow from time to time.